Edwin Snyder, who came from Compton, California. But the Brooklyn fans adopted him and rechristened him the Duke of Flatbush. Power was Duke Snyder's game. With his picture swing, he had 418 home runs and was voted into the Hall of Fame. A beautiful night for baseball at Shea Stadium in New York. And hi again, everybody. This is Dave Van Horn along with Duke Snyder. The Expos are rolling along Duke. It seems they can't do anything wrong. Well, Dave, I think Jim Fanning's doing something that uh, is going to really pay off in the end. He's resting players. He's rested Carter. He's rested Dawson. We lived in this area from 1952 to 1957. It's a beautiful area of Brooklyn called Bay Ridge. This was our house. A lot of players lived in this area in Bay Ridge. Uh, Pee Wee Reese lived a block and a half away. Carl Erskine about four blocks away. Preacher Row not too far away, about a mile and a half. And the neighborhood was very close. We had block parties a couple of times during the summer, barbecues and what have you. And Pee Wee and I rode together, and he'd pick me up out front here, and uh, I'd drive by and pick him up. And uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We talked baseball naturally all the way to the park and all the way back, and uh, I learned an awful lot from him. He would get very upset with himself uh, if he didn't if he didn't do well. He pouted. <laughs> it's the only terminology I can think of. He was a powder. When I when I was a youngster, and I think most professional athletes when they were youngsters, they were. Uh, the stars of their team in high school. I, I really didn't know what uh, failure was. And I, uh, I got to the big leagues, and uh, I thought it would be a snap. I thought it would be a piece of cake, and uh, it wasn't. And I, I finally met up with uh, adversity. He would, he would maybe go 0 for 3 or 0 for 4. He'd be standing out in the outfield, and maybe he wouldn't be thinking about who the hitter was. He's thinking about not getting a base hit. And I'd look around to him and say, hey, Duke, move in, move in a couple of steps. And he'd take one big step and look at me like this. Is this far enough? But he did have this, whatever, little personality problem, which manifested itself one night in Brooklyn when the fans got on him substantially, booed him pretty heavily. And uh, Duke came in the clubhouse. I think we lost the game, probably. And Duke yells across to the old clubhouse, you writers want to write something? I'll give you something to write. These are the lousiest baseball fans in the world, right here in Brooklyn. You can print it. Pee Wee says, you don't mean that. I said, I mean it. You know, So they, they wrote it. It was uh, Chase Eisenhower's heart attack back to page four, or something like that. And the next day, guys, did they write Snyder? Oh, man. They came out in droves to get on the Duke. I said, man, Duke, you could be in for a rough night. He kind of smiled. I said, yeah, it could be. He singled the first time, homered the second, doubled the second. He had like four for four, two home runs. They were cheering the roof off of that place before the night was over. He had a grace about his movements that was beautiful. Now, here's Snyder rounding the bases. And I get chills watching this guy. And I think, this is my roommate. This, is, this guy is destined. He's great. I can run, throw, hit, field, uh, uh, do all the facets of the game and, and do them rather well. I think the, probably the weakest uh, point of my game was fielding ground balls. Duke, I said, why in the hell don't you charge those ground balls out there? See, these guys don't even hesitate at second base. He said, Peely, I want to tell you something. He said, I was an infielder when I was younger and said, I hated those ground balls and I still hate them. But all in all, I, I just have to say, after all, he's a Hall of Famer and just do his just do. Duke had everything and was everything that he was, but he could have been greater. I think he could have risen to even greater heights that he really pushed himself every once in a while. I think Clem's right. Uh, I, I could have been a better ball player, and that uh, bothered me. But, uh, you know, some guys mature at the age of 30, and some guys mature at the age of 25, and some never mature. And, uh, and, uh, I don't know exactly what uh, what turned it around for me as far as uh, being a worry ward and a and a and a moper and a and a moody type person, but uh, I don't know. You 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 finally realize that uh, there's much more to to life than uh, a strikeout. Probably the saddest uh, day in my life was when I was sold to the Mets for money. That's the time where uh, I realized that loyalty was uh, 
wasn't any longer a part of the Dodger tradition. In 1964, uh, I finished my career as a giant. And it was probably the, the eeriest feeling that I've ever had in my life. I looked down and see giants across my chest. It was eerie. I'd, I'd look down and say, oh, no. But uh, I was at a time in my life where I'm putting four children through school, and, uh, and the dollar was needed. And I played that year, only I didn't do much. I, I was through. In fact, I was through at age 31 when I had knee surgery. But I didn't know what year, but I knew it was going to be soon that I was going to have to have something to fall back on. The avocado farm, uh, 1956, why we started, uh, we moved to Fallbrook and uh, moved on our 30 acres of land where we planted the trees and everything. Uh, it takes a long time for those trees to grow and to make money. And uh, so we built a bowling alley in Fallbrook, but uh, the town wasn't quite ready for as big an establishment as we put up. And uh, the people that I was in business with all of a sudden said, well, we're going to have to close the bowling alley. and 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 go into bankruptcy. I had a lot of sleepless nights, and uh, we, we, my wife and I both did, but uh, I sold the ranch, and uh, I got into uh, managing and teaching and baseball. You got strong arms, but it takes some of your body to go along with those arms to hit the ball, you know? Did you hit every game? No. I'm not saying that. <laughs> no, I don't play it. <laughs> Yes, I struck out 1,200 times. Buzzy Vivace of the Dodgers was trying to get a franchise in San Diego. And I told him I'd like to go with him. And I'm not sure, but uh, if I'd have said I'd like to be the manager, he might have put, made me the manager. But I didn't want to be the manager because it's an expansion team, number one. You're going to lose 110 to 120 games. And uh, I, I knew I couldn't handle that. So I said, well, I kind of like to broadcast. He said, OK, you got it. You're a broadcaster. Like a little slider. It didn't slide much, but reigns over the top of the pitch for the strikeout. So Craig Swan throwing the ball with a little more velocity than we saw him last time he pitched against the Expo. I'm very happy in what I'm doing, and I just hope that not too many other ex-ball players find out about this job, because uh, I've got a couple more years I want to work yet.